The spiritual journey of the second Archdiocesan Synod is being celebrated at this closing Mass. We gather to celebrate gratitude for our Catholic faith. From when the first Marist missionaries arrived on our shores on the 15th of August, 1844, up to the present, we also express gratitude for the localization of our church. We gather to celebrate that as a local church, we took on a visible face when Bishop Petero Matava was ordained as the first Itauke bishop in 1974. Are you resolved to be faithful and constant in proclaiming the gospel of Christ? I am. Are you resolved to pray without ceasing? One of the pillars of this localization was the first Archdiocesan Synod which he called in 1990 and officially promulgated a vision of church for the Archdiocese of Suva as the family of God. We gather today to celebrate in thanksgiving the Synod sessions held at the Novotel Convention Center from the 7th to the 9th of June 2019. This was a clear sign of active participation of the people of God. Catechism curriculum needs constant updating to reflect the teachings of the Church in this modern day and age. The Church must therefore proactively strengthen and empower her greatest resource, the people of God. After communion today, the Archbishop will receive the recommendations for future planning for the Archdiocese. We also gather today to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, which was evident at the Synod launch on the 20th of May 2018 at the ANZ Stadium up to the present, and especially for the graces of ecclesial unity and deeper understanding of the Catholic faith. After our Eucharistic celebration today, we begin a new journey. After listening to His Grace about his decisions for the future of the Archdiocese of Suva, with great hope we look forward to the norms, policies, statutes, guidelines and pastoral plan that will help us live out our Catholic faith with integrity and joy. We also move with the Holy Spirit from 2020, implementing a pastoral plan that addresses the seven subjects, church and sacramental life, climate change, ecology, education, family, church and governance, and church and society, that you have brought to the attention of the Archbishop through the two-year consultative process. Our faith journey doesn't end here. It is just the beginning. This journey invites us to, as St. John Paul II in his address to the Latin American bishops said, and I quote, look to the future with commitment to a new evangelization, one that is new in its ardor, new in its methods, and new in its expression, end of quote. His grace articulates this same sentiment by dreaming of a missionary church that will effectively respond to the social realities of the Fijian people. To make this dream a reality, the church's self-understanding and missionary practice must be updated. The church needs a spirituality that links faith and life. The church in Fiji is located at the crossroads of rapid social, economic, and political changes. Today, we celebrate God. Today, we celebrate our participation in Jesus' transforming mission, who through the power of the Holy Spirit 
resends us in this Eucharist to be church in the world.